a scouting patrol. I can't afford to spare any men for that. We're seriously undermanned as it is, Mucius. Paulus! Publius! We're half a mile from Rome. It's the most dangerous part of the road. Stay with me and keep your eyes open. Come on! Hurry up there! to get away from here alive. Hurry! Try to protect the cart! You, send off the alarm signal! Go on! Hurry! To your position! They'll all be slaughtered. There's nothing I can do about it. I've been forbidden to send out any of our soldiers. Let me open the gate. That's impossible. The consul won't allow it. Ah, uh, yes. Quite right. And we'll obey him. What are you doing, Lucius? You've gone mad. Run and ask the consul to come here. What are you two doing here? Who is the idiot who let you pass? Oh, excuse me, Valeria. Forgive me, Clelia. I have sent a message to your father, the consul. I hope he'll come quickly. Where's Mucius? He's gone to try to rescue the convoy. Oh. Stand firm, men. I've come to help you. It's Mucius! Fight harder! Now we'll be able to get through! You trust me, coward. We'll beat you now.
Why don't you go with the others? There are more coming toward us. Look there. Go on with the others. Don't stand there. That's an order. Battlements? Yes. And I thought I would die. I was so frightened. Tell me honestly, Valeria. How can a soldier marry such a timid little creature? <laughs> you better get married and you'll soon find out. That's our grain. Why don't we take it? We better take it while we have a chance. Come on. They're becoming like animals. I've got to do something about this. Come, I want to talk to you. Excuse us, Valeria. What's going on here? They were trying to steal the grain. Oh, please listen. Try to understand why they behave like that, Father. The poor things are starving. Justice once set them free. Let them go. I hear you had a bad time getting through. I'd like to hear about it. Ten men were killed in the Etruscan ambush. The wagons were all saved. Thanks to the intervention of Mucius. Do you confirm that? Yes. You could say he defeated them almost single-handed. These people are hungry, Father. They've been waiting all day for the arrival of the carts. Won't you order the distribution immediately? You're quite right, my child. Citizens, listen to me carefully. The grain has cost many lives. This, you will agree, has made it doubly precious. It's going to be immediately distributed with the most scrupulous fairness. And afterwards? They'll capture you. I'll never see you anymore. I just know they'll kill you. Look at me closely. A while ago, you saw that crowd of starving people. Those demoralized soldiers. Rome is at the end of its resources. Its strength is exhausted. And me? What about me? What am I going to do without you, Mucius? If Rome falls and Tarquin returns to power, we won't even be free to love one another. I must kill the king of the Etruscans. Without him, Tarquin's fangs will be drawn. But how? When? This very night. I'll kill him in his tent. In his very bed, if necessary. But that's suicidal. Do you remember Lucretia? She didn't kill herself because of the shame that Tarquin brought upon her. No. She killed herself because she wanted to show us how to live. And so our Republic was born, and we regained our liberty without which life is not worth living. If I die, others will follow me. But Rome must be saved. <laughs> Goodbye. Motion! Motion! I'll never see you again, Moshe. My Moshe.
Thomas. Thomas. Sit down with us. What's the matter with him? I thought he was supposed to be on guard. Yes, that's right. Pour me another drink. What is it? If you have something to say to the king, you can come back tomorrow. Horsina doesn't want to be disturbed tonight. Didn't you understand? Get away from here. don't want him killed. First he'll be made to speak. Take out the body. Why have you killed my faithful lieutenant? Answer him. You are poison. So it was I you intended to kill. Who are you? A Roman. What is your name? Lucius. Yes, you're right. I recognize him. It's he, all right. The strongest of all the Roman soldiers. Their real commander. If that's the case, my lieutenant's life was worth sacrificing. Now the Roman armies are without a commander. You know what is awaiting you. I was prepared for it. See to his execution. Lucius certainly knows all about their military circumstances and the true situation of Rome and of her allies. Why don't we make him talk? This is a good opportunity we offer you. If you tell us what we wish to know, we may grant you your life. Your young son evidently doesn't know Romans. Perhaps when you felt the most horrible of all tortures, you'll become a little more reasonable. him over here. I'll go alone. With this hand, I meant to kill Porsena. It failed. For that, I punish it. Position quickly. Will it ever heal? Perhaps. I'm grateful. You may go now. The rest of you leave me too. You're safe, but only for a short time. There are a hundred men in Rome who have sworn to kill you. They won't fail. My motives in this matter are legitimate. I wanted to regain my rightful territories. You have them now, aren't you satisfied? The Senate in Rome does not wish to recognize my right to them. You can negotiate. But only on one condition. That you leave Tarquin to his fate. If you're an honorable man, you cannot associate yourself with a bloodthirsty tyrant whom the Romans have driven out. It is for this that we cannot forgive you. And it's for this that you will die. Leave the two of us alone, Arundi. They 
told me about his latest exploits. Is he still alive? Yes, and he's conferring secrecy with my father. What do you mean? I'm afraid he's going to persuade him to call a truce. May the gods of darkness crush both of them. The old man has gone mad. It would have been better if he'd stayed at home in Clusium and nursed his senile infirmities. <laughs> By this time, Rome would have fallen into our hands. Come on. In these circumstances, a truce will not be possible. In the future, if you've convinced me that you speak the truth, I shall lift the siege and acclaim with no reservations the new Republic of Rome. If I had known you before, I would never have tried to take your life. I've waited a long time, Mucius. Now at last, I'm able to look you straight in the face. A ridiculous hero of a ridiculous little republic. You could have seen it a hundred times in battle, but neither I nor my humblest soldier ever laid eyes on you. The war would have been over a long time if this coward had been willing to fight me in single combat. I'm quite willing now. <laughs> Perhaps even you could beat me now. Please be seated, Tarquin, and try to listen calmly if that's possible. Just what am I you? supposed to listen to? The disparaging words of a slanderer, a cutthroat hired to murder you in the most treacherous way. No. I leave such abasement to you, Porcelain. That's enough. Even my patience has a limit, Tarquin. I welcomed you. I've helped you. When you came to me for aid, I placed a well-equipped army at your disposal, but I have found that you told me a mountain of lies to gain your ends. Swearing to me that the people of Rome were only waiting for you to make your appearance under the walls, to rise up in rebellion and overthrow the new republic. I still swear it. And I can prove it to you whenever you wish. This young man has already proved the contrary. It's obvious that the attempt on your life has confused you. But think very carefully. What else can his actions mean but that they are in desperate straits? The desperation of such men is equal to the strength of many others who would like to imitate them. Mucius has been my enemy for many years. I'm forced to the conclusion that only an overwhelming jealousy made him attempt to murder you. It was my life he wanted to take. I'm certain of it. Living in Rome is a pretty little girl whose name is Clelia. He's in love with her. <laughs> She's one that I have, on certain occasions, honored with my attentions. <laughs> you vile scoundrel! See that? I hit the right target. I shall never cease to reproach myself for having become your ally, Tarquin. What do you mean by that? I mean that from this moment, I consider myself free to make whatever decisions that suit me, including the disposition of my soul. You'll go back on our firm agreement? You're prepared to break our sacred alliance? With you, nothing can be accounted sacred, Tarquin. Be very careful of what you're doing, Borsana. Set Mucius free. Tomorrow, you will take him with a strong escort to Rome. You'll offer to the Senate of the Republic the conditions of a truce and a peace treaty that I shall prepare at once. You're making a terrible mistake, Porsner. Do you agree, my son? I shall execute your orders, father. Don't ask me for more. Hey, LaRonte. Lucius and the escort are just leaving the camp. Why did you want to see me? Because I wanted to wish you the best of luck on your important mission. I never expected you to take this so calmly. I owe a debt of long standing to your father and don't want to go against his wishes. He wants to make peace and he shall have it. But dealing with the Romans is more difficult than fighting them. May I offer you some good advice? Certainly, Tarquin. First, the most important thing. Take my faithful Claudius. He's a man of resource and knows the tricky Romans better than anyone. Very well. What else? Remember that the Senate of Rome will be prepared to accept any kind of conditions. But it will do so only to gain time and make new alliances. You must insist, as a guarantee of keeping the truce, on having important hostages. My father has mentioned no such thing in his proposal. Oh, your father is without guile. We saw the way he was taken in by that Mutus. You must ask of the Senate in Rome ten fair young girls chosen from the richest and most noble families. 
But among them, just make sure they give you Clelia. She's from the house of Fabi. Why do you insist on her? She's been promised as bride to Mushes. With her in our power, we'll be able to keep him under our control. We'll restrain him in all his movements. Remember, he's dangerous to us. Maybe you're right. I'll do just as you say. It's best for all concerned. You may be sure of that, Arunte. You go with him. Tell Horatius that the moment has come to destroy them all. Publicola and Mucius shall be the first ones to be dealt with. I shall inform them. But Mucius's end will be my own concern. Go. Arunte, the son of Porson. He brings the terms of the truce with him. I know the Senate will make its own decision, but I can only say that Porson's proposals show a real desire for peace. The Senate is waiting to hear you. Clelia. Oh, by your wounded. Is it serious? I don't know. Oh. I'll be around to talk to you this evening. Very well. This evening we'll meet at my house. I want you all to be there without fail. The conditions that Porsena, through your offices, has proposed to us are not altogether acceptable. However, we will consider them on the basis that they are an outline from which we will draw up the major points for the peace treaty, which will be definitive. In the meantime, we accept a military truce while we take your proposals into consideration. This is our reply to Porsena. If the noble senators here present are in agreement, they will raise their hands to show their approval. If I have properly understood, you will immediately accept a truce. But you reserve the right to discuss the final conditions of a peace treaty at some time in the future. Exactly. In that case, we must have some guarantee that you will not utilize the armistice in any other manner than to study the points necessary to reach an agreement. You must give us some hostages. Hostages? That's outrageous! What hostages? Ten young maidens of noble blood. And among them, Clelia. The bride promised to Mucius. Never! This is an insult! We will never agree! How dare they! Silence! Keep calm! Calm! We must put this request to the vote. We won't tolerate it! Then there can be no truce. The war will start again immediately. Then let's have the war. Rome has never been afraid to fight. For me, I accept the agreements. And to make sure I'm not accused of unfair discrimination, I will hand over my daughter Valeria. Porsena is an honest man to be trusted. We must show him that we are equally so. The peace of the world asks, demands from many of us fathers this great sacrifice. We must be worthy. History will prove us to have been right. I leave the final choice to all of you. Those who approve, raise their hands now. Your demands have been accepted. 
You shall have your hostages. I know the way you must be feeling, but I give you my word of honor that your young daughters will be treated as their high rank merits. I shall insist that they be returned to you at the very start of the discussion of the peace treaty. Does it still hurt, Mucius? Much less now. The new treatment that a Tuscan doctor gave you was wonderful. Yes, but the hand feels dead. It's brought us peace. Don't you think that's enough? Publicola. What is it? We've arrived at some sort of an agreement. Valeria. But I can see in your face that you're not satisfied. The Senate has accepted all of Porsena's conditions to safeguard the peace treaty. A wise decision. I see then you had decided to give up Clelia. Clelia? What are you talking about? Arunzi has insisted we give him hostages, ten young maidens from the nobility, among them naturally Clelia. And the Senate accepted? Every word I have spoken is true. But this is ignoble. Arunti has no right to demand hostages. Porsena never mentioned them. Yes, but there is nothing we can do. To safeguard Rome, we are compelled to send them. My own daughter Valeria is going with the others. We're ready to leave now. Don't be afraid. I'll be worthy of you. I thought I had paid enough. It was well done, Arunte. I can see you had the good sense to follow my suggestion. I hope I'll never have cause to regret it. Who are all these young women? They're Roman hostages. Hostages? But why? They're here to guarantee the armistice is respected. I thought it was a good idea. Someone advised you. Surely you could see it was dishonorable. This is Clelia. She's promised in marriage to Mucius. You're lovely, my dear. And this is Valeria. She's the daughter of the famous consul, Publicola. Publicola and Mucius. Two of the men whose wisdom and bravery set them apart from all others. You have forced them to come here, so their welfare shall be your responsibility. Arunti, see to it that they are treated as befits their rank, and that everything is done to make them comfortable. The most important thing for you to ensure is that no one shall be lacking in respect to them. We shall meet later on for the evening meal. Your father is a fine king. I'm glad you think so. Allow me to show you to your tent. I hope you'll remember your stay with us here as a delightful vacation. Take those things through there and get everything ready at once. I apologize to you for these very poor accommodations, ladies, but it's the best we can do. Unfortunately, this is a camp for rough soldiers. For over a year, we have had to get used to the discomforts of war. Clelia! <laughs> Who would have dreamed of finding a girl like you here? Don't think it gives me any pleasure to see you. <laughs> That's the result of being governed by Republicans. Not long ago, Clelia was gracious and courteous towards me. And now only see how she treats her own king. I'm puzzled. I was sure that you were pleased with your treatment in my palace. <laughs> Don't you remember? No. Neither I nor the Romans want to remember you, not even your name. Except perhaps to curse you. <laughs> now you can see the character of the Roman girls. Beautiful and haughty. Just what all of us soldiers <laughs> like. Well, well, Arunti. <laughs> You've made yourself protector of all Get these... out of here. What's the matter? Have you gone out of your mind? No one is going to lay a finger on these girls. It's an order of the king. 
and I intend to see it respected by everybody. <laughs> All right, Arunthi. But I still think it's stupid to get so belligerent about uh, such paltry things. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you on behalf of all of us. None of you need have any fears as long as I am here with you. Thank you. Thank you for making this a most pleasant evening. It was the happiest I've spent for a long time. May the gods watch over and protect you. Sleep well. Your father is a very kind man. Arunte. May we ask a great favor of you? Ask anything you wish. We would like to write a letter to Rome. You may write as many letters as you want to. I'll see they get to their destination. However, there's one condition. That you write nothing bad about me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's too difficult a condition. Who wants to come for a walk with me? It's a beautiful evening. No, no, we're all too tired. I think I'll go to bed. What about you, Clelia? Willingly. If you're sure you want me. I can't permit you to go alone. You're under my protection. <laughs> Take it with you. Follow me. On a night like this, everything seems so peaceful. I can't accept the fact that you're an enemy of my country. But the Etruscans and the Romans are no longer enemies. And you are the pledge of our continued peace. <laughs> there are others, too. Clelia has vanished. Clelia. She was here only a moment ago. Well, then she can't be very far away. Clelia. Clelia. We have nothing whatsoever to worry about. I can assure you that my followers in Rome will rise up. Publicola and Mucius will be taken care of. That's the first thing we'll do. The men who are with us are ready for anything. We must only keep ourselves prepared to act. The moment we're all waiting for might even come tomorrow, if I receive good news from Rome. If it should be unsatisfactory, I've already a plan to break up the forthcoming negotiations for peace. Now everybody back to their own stations. Good night. Clelia. Well, what are you waiting for? There are other girls at the camp. <laughs> if this one's so anxious, the others must be impatient too. <laughs> now I'll make you sorry for insulting me. Valerio! Valerio! Arunte! Companions are in terrible danger. Arinthi, it's your duty to protect us all. You must do something immediately. Come with me. Get out of here. The first man to disobey will taste my sword. But it was only a joke, Arunthi. You don't understand. You have rebelled against an order of my father. Have you men forgotten that all hostages are sacred to the honor of our soldiers? We wouldn't dream of disobeying the orders of our beloved king. It was only... Get out of here! I hope you will forgive us for what has happened. I promise you it will never occur again. You have nothing more to fear now.
Listen, all of you. Tomorrow we must get away from here. After what has happened, we can never really feel safe again. I'm quite satisfied to be under the protection of Porsena. Or rather, that of Arante. And why not? I find him kind and courageous. I don't doubt it. But I learned something tonight that changes everything. Tarquin is plotting to start the war all over again. And that means our presence here guarantees absolutely nothing and is only furthering his project. How do you know? Before they caught me tonight, I heard what he said to the Etruscan leaders. Why didn't you tell Arunti about it immediately? Because if I had done so, I would have ruined everything uselessly. The true master in this camp is Tarquin. The captains obey only his orders. But that isn't all. In Rome, our families are exposed to a terrible danger. Tarquin's followers are going to revolt and kill them all. Just think of your father. And there's Mucius, too. We must warn them, Valeria. Halt. Make yourselves known. Lucius. Hail, Lucius. Is everything all right? I wouldn't say so. There's a strange sort of tension in the air. The people have shut themselves up in their houses as though they felt some terrible premonition. And yet peace is not far off. That's true. But the city is crawling with dirty traitors. If you like, we can escort you to your house. That won't be necessary. Carry on with your patrol. a hero like you for a more inglorious end. Get him. Kill him! time I've had to run from a fight. Well, you gave a good account of yourself. If you hadn't come, they would have killed me. They have met an end they richly deserved. This would be a good time to do it. Look there. No one is even watching us. You're sure about running away? Everybody has agreed upon it. I still think it's wrong. Why? Staying on here under the protection of Arunte would be much safer for us. He's an honorable man and will see to it that we're not harmed. What happened the other night is proof of it. He spoke one word and those horrible men ran away. Neither he nor his father can help anymore. The Etruscan chiefs stand behind Tarquin. It's only a question of time now. But if Arunte knows nothing, Clelia, he might believe that we've acted treacherously. I understand how you feel about it. But we have no other choice. It's our duty now to try to save our families. You know that very well, Valeria. Then I won't say any more. Come. This big log should serve our purpose. 
Don't be frightened. If we all push, we should be able to get it out into midstream. Rome's not much more than a mile away. Clelia, I'm so frightened. Of what? I don't know how to swim well. Don't worry, I'll help you. Yes, but the Etruscan soldiers will try to kill all of us. I don't think they dare do that, Valeria. Take courage. This is no time for hesitation. Now all together, into the water. Push! Harder! Come along, swim! Swim, all of you, swim! Swim! Hey, what are you doing? Come back here or we'll shoot! Come back! <laughs> You clumsy idiots, what are you waiting for? Come and see what a fool your pretty hostages have made of you. It's all your fault. It's because of the brutality of you and your henchmen. Very well. Then you may leave it up to us to repair the damage. <laughs> I must remind you of the rules of war that you have all accepted swearing loyalty and obedience to my father. You are under his orders as his subjects and as soldiers. The man who forgets this is risking execution. It's impossible to make treaties with such barbarians. This is the unanimous and firm decision of the Senate majority. Noble senators, no one more than myself can understand your legitimate indignation. But from the information we've received from Clelia, we are absolutely certain that Porsena is a man of great loyalty. He wishes for peace as strongly as we do. But if we do not restore the hostages, Tarquin will take the advantage of declaring us to be in bad faith and to accuse us of breaking the armistice we sacrificed so much to obtain. We accepted the terms once. That's enough. We cannot send our daughters as hostages again to the enemy. It's useless to argue anymore. The session is over. We've done enough. Even war is preferable. It is our break. What will come of this? We must try once more to make contact with Porsena. Tell him of all the things we know now and that perhaps he's ignorant of. Inform him of the plot hatched by Tarquin. We must warn him, advise him. You, Mucius, are the person to do it. Clelia and Valeria must be surrendered at once. In this manner, we will prove that we're in good faith. You will accompany them with a large escort and explain everything to Porsena. But the Senate has already decided. It is not the Senate, but the senators who have been overcome with paternal anxiety. It seems a pity to risk the lives of two innocent girls. I am well aware of it, but we must do everything that is in our power to crush out all other human sentiments, but those which further the eventual good of our countrymen. Tarquin. Tarquin. Tarquin! What is it? What do you want? There's news from Rome. 
Horatius. Well, then, what is it? You ordered torrents of blood, and it flowed. But it was the blood of our people. The conspiracy has failed. And you, you miserable rag, why are you here? You shouldn't be unjust to one who served you well. It's miraculous that I alone have managed to escape. And the others? Dead or prisoners. Even Claudius? Yes. And naturally, Mucius is still alive. Tomorrow he will come to the camp to return the most important of the hostages, Clelia and Valeria. Clelia and Valeria, here tomorrow. I have had accurate information concerning the intentions of the Sabines and the Albans. Their intervention on the side of the Romans is given as imminent. Where is Tarquin, son? He's left the camp with twenty archers. The sentinels told me he was traveling towards the west. Go after him. Take a troop of soldiers and arrest him. I'll teach him a lesson he won't forget for daring to disobey my orders. We must free ourselves of this unscrupulous man. I don't want anything to spread the conflict. Tomorrow it is my intention to sign the peace treaty. And immediately afterwards we will strike camp. You may go. Hurry, to the horses! Aim very carefully, and make sure of your target. Clearly, I must not be harmed. Milone. We must be sure of killing the Roman consul's daughter. The desire to revenge her death will force Publicola's hand, and a truce will be broken. Then we will see if Porsena babbles on about peace. Get ready, men! Halt! You two at the front. You two on each side. You two to the rear. What did you do that for? They're only precautionary measures. March! Get ready, men.
Valeria. I came too late. I was too late. I will revenge you. I'm sure I recognize the man who did it. It was Tarquin. I will kill him. for you. Hold! I imagine this to be an unpleasant surprise. <laughs> Frankly, I didn't expect it myself, I must confess. You traitors! You prefer to support a murderer instead of your king! Cowards! That's where you're wrong! They are brave soldiers who prefer war to base and shameful peace. The army will know how to punish your crime as the you... The army obeys only its leaders. The men want victory, and they shall have it. As for you, I swear no harm shall come to you. Once the war's over, you'll be set free. And these same soldiers will decide what shall be done with you. caught us in a trap, Publicola. I'm afraid Mucius is dead, too. I only wanted peace. And they have mortally wounded me through their deaths. The truce is broken. Not only I, but all the people of Rome will want war. And they shall have it. Take her home. wine tasted so good. Let us all drink to the triumph of our glorious armies and the death of Caius Mucius.
mourns the death of her favorite son, we must remember that tears cannot heal our wounds. For the sake of our people, we must take strength from this terrible blow and strike back at those who have inflicted it upon us. We have no choice, I tell you. To surrender is all that is left to us. Better death than humiliation by the barbarians. It is our duty to save Rome from destruction. Let us surrender. Cowards, traitors, you! You are the traitors, and you know very well we can never win the war. I say we should prepare to surrender, and the talk which shall be our king once more. I am alive, thank the gods. But don't have any illusions. If talk when it is wrong, not one life will be spared. Now, who spoke of surrender? Better to die than live under tyranny. Go to war. Mushas will show the victory. War! Yes. War live Mushas! Mushas shall lead us! Death to the Etruscans! The news has been confirmed. The Albans and the Sabines will intervene. Their plan is to attack us from the flank at the most critical moment of our offensive. That's very satisfactory. We'll manage to trick them all. Romans and their allies. We are not going to attack the Romans. But the Romans are going to attack us. Before I explain to you what I have in mind, I must know the exact situation here in camp. There were no attempts to escape during the night. The soldiers have all understood that it's in their own interest to obey us. The deserters that fled to Rome can be of great use to us. Without doubt, the Romans will think that our armies are weakened, divided, and that'll encourage them. When they find out that we have lifted the siege and that we are retreating... Retreating? But that's absurd! When we withdraw towards Bay, we'll be giving an excuse to the Allies to stay right where they are. An invitation to the Romans to attack us, and an opportunity for us to smash them at a time and place most favorable to us. We are more numerous and much stronger. I tell you, we'll destroy the whole Roman army once and for all time. In the greatest battle in history. Porcina and Arunte are still greatly beloved by many soldiers in the Etruscan army. Tarquin only inspires hatred and contempt in them. We must take advantage of this before their resentment over the unjust treatment of their king has had time to cool down. The sooner we act, the more sure we will be of success. I have thought it over and advise immediate action. With the help of the gods, we shall not fail. The gates shall be flung open, and our army will go forth to glorious victory. We'll pursue the enemy. We'll attack him and destroy him forever. And of Tarquin the Proud, there shall remain nothing on the face of the earth except the story of his dishonorable end. Well I propose to nominate one commander in authority who will have absolute powers for the duration of the war. Caius Mucius. Caius Mucius is our commander. If you're saying that to comfort me, you're wasting your breath. The wound is healing very well. As you saw for yourself, it'll soon be all right. It's dead. I can't feel it. The nerves and the articulation will come back to life, but it'll take time, of course. <laughs> time. Time is something I don't have. It's already miraculous that we were not forced to amputate your hand. I feel useless without a sword in my hand. A centurion wishes to speak to you. Send him in. I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you, Servius. And forgive me for being a difficult patient. Greetings, Mucius. Greetings, Livius. What can I do for you? The son of Porson, Arunti, has managed to escape. He immediately asked to see you. Where is he? Through there. Arunti. Mucius, I can't tell you how happy I am to see you. Me too. Tell me about Clelia. She's been put under the care of the high priest. The Etruscan chiefs would have been willing to exchange her for their soldiers, your prisoners, but Tarquin refused to allow it. The scoundrel! Until the Ides of May, she will be in no danger. Only then, I'm afraid, during the celebrations in honor of the goddess Ceres, Clelia will be offered as a slave to Tarquin. The Ides of May. <coughs> That's in ten days' time. Arunte, I've just heard about your escape. And I'm very happy indeed to have you here with us again. I hope that your noble father, Porsena, will be able to join you. I thank you. The Senate has approved your nomination as Commander-in-Chief of our armies with absolute powers. You shall have the honor of leading our soldiers to victory. In the past, I would have received your words with pride and joy. 
Now they seem almost to mock me. How can I lead them into battle? Once my sword would have cleared a path through the enemy as wide as this room. But now I... We know your courage can never be diminished. That's what counts. For you, our men will fight bravely. For you, they will be proud to die. That adds greatly to my bitterness. I am a soldier, not a figurehead. With the strength of your left hand alone, you can fight like two men. Don't underestimate it, Mucius. I tried that with Tarquin and the sword fell from my hand. But that was some time ago. For how long now have you been using that same hand to dress yourself? For eating and drinking and even for writing? For all the things that before you used to do with your right hand? I'll bet that by now it comes so naturally that you might have been born left-handed. Perhaps if I did try it. I'm sure of... One hand is as good as another. You must exercise it and keep on exercising it. If you like, I'll help you. say that I have strength in my left hand, but I'm not left-handed. Come on, don't give up so easily. Let's carry on. Let's go. Be careful now, Mucius, or you'll defeat me much too easily. few days more, and I'm not going to be so foolish as to challenge you even for a joke. <laughs> I can't complain, but I think you're exaggerating. If you don't believe me, try out with your soldiers. You know the most capable. Call them and see how you make out. I'll be able to check on you better if I can watch from the side. All right. Publius! Julius! Aulus! Come here! You're first, Aulus. And no holding back on your part. Fight! Who do you think I am? <laughs> All right, then. Attack! Come on, Publius. Fight as if you were really in combat. Notice which is your weak point. My right side. It's impossible for you to defend. What we need is something to protect you. Like this. And if it was made of iron, made like a huge glove that you could put on for fighting, what do you think? I'm sure there are good artisans in Rome who could make it for you.
From now on, you can call me the left-handed. Motion! I've been discussing it with Arunte, and he knows the time, the place, and the people involved. The plan is simple and precise. Tarquin is encamped at Vey to organize the festivities for Ceres. We must attack him at that time and at that place. Arunte will prepare the way for me by revealing himself to the first soldiers he meets and inciting them to rebel. I'm certain that many of them are still loyal and will come over to us. I hope so. In any event, your arrival will serve to distract the enemy while I break into their camp and take them by surprise. The men I have chosen have sworn to fight to the death. We will strike at the heart of the enemy, at Tarquin himself. We'll keep him engaged until you arrive with our main troops. What if I should be delayed in my arrival? The army must march in small groups and at night to avoid being discovered by the enemy. That's true. But we'll begin our attack when you're within a few miles of Vey. And if it fails, we'll have to change our plan. I'm only rash with my own life, not others. Very well, Mushus. And when do we march? This very night. The Ides of May are only two days off. few men in the camp. Nearly all have gone to watch the festivities. We'll attack at once. This is no time to hold back. I know, but there's something that's worrying me. Their whole strength is not gathered at Tarquin's camp. The greater part of their army is assembled in a nearby valley. That doesn't matter. Publicola must be near now. All right. I'll go ahead as we agreed. Bountiful to those who do you honor and offer their devotion. To you we wish to sacrifice these lands. And for you, we offer the magnificent Tarquin, a virgin of noble Roman blood. It's Arunti. 
It's Prince Arunta. Yes, I am indeed your prince. Just as my father is still your king. But you permit him to be kept in chains by a band of traitors who are serving under an unscrupulous assassin. There's nothing we can do about it. You'd better go away. Not before you've all listened to me. Come forward. Hear what I have to say. Afterwards, it will be your own consciences that will tell you what to do. This gift that we offer you has been earned by your great valor. A paltry offering, but accepted as a small token of our faith in your cause. It is the will of the mighty gods that under the rays of this sun, before the whole world, you are mine. Give me your hand. You'll never have me alive. Will you? <gasps> Lucius! Attack! Tarquin, Roman cavalry is advancing across the plain. They're four miles from here. That's just what I wanted. Destroy that mass of vermin, and I'll pay his weight in gold for the head of Musha. Get the troops ready to go into battle. We haven't a moment to lose. Our fate will be decided today. To arms. ready for the final assault. Attack with the infantry. hopelessly outnumbered by them. Have the others join the assault. Attack with the cavalry. is attacking. Give orders for our cavalry to attack. Forward! Be prepared to die for the glory of Rome on the battlefield. Forward!
My father has been freed. Some of our men are under his command. Forward, then. Forward to freedom! <laughs> Our men have gone over to the enemy. Bushes and Arunta are leading them. Flee while there's still time. I still have one arrow left to my bow. Milani. Surrender, Tark, when you dog. It's finished for you. If you take another step forward, Clelia will be killed. Milone! Tarquin, hold there! You're a king. If you still have any dignity left, accept your fate honorably. If you refuse to withdraw your men, I will give Milone the order to strike. That won't save your life, and you know it. But if the consul approves, I will give you a chance to save yourself. You're the commander. Our victory is due only to you. Allow your own conscience to guide your decision. Fight with me in single combat. If you win, your life will be spared. That will not be sufficient. The Roman army must fall back for at least 10 miles. I accept. In addition, Every single man that you've taken prisoner must be freed at once. I accept. And I want a guarantee that the Romans will take no further action against me or against any of my eventual allies for the duration of one year. I accept. What else do you want, assassin? To kill you. You're all of you witnesses, friends and enemies that I accept this challenge of Mucius in good faith and that I believe in the pledge he has given. Here I am. Give him a shield. Thank you, Mushes, for giving me this fresh opportunity. Your life was saved by a miracle the last time we met. But now, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> 